Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be covering the SEC's potential 366 model. Um, if you're not aware of what this is, the SEC has decided to have every team in the conference play nine conference games a year. So um, instead of it doing being the usual eight and having um, divisions, they're going to get rid of the division format. So don't be confused by the new SEC divisions that you see on there. It was just a random uh, JPEG that I downloaded and used it as the background of this video. But no more divisions, um, no more eight-game conference schedules. It's now going to be a nine-game conference schedule where every team in the conference faces each other at least once in a two-year span. So that's what the purpose of the 366 model is for, creating familiarity with every team in the conference and re-establishing some old key rivalries like Florida and Auburn, for an example, and to have every team, you know, go on the road and face each other and, you know, and, you know, basically swap home games because I know for a fact that Georgia has never visited Texas A&M as an SEC school. Um, you know, having Texas on the road at Mississippi State will get to will allow some Mississippi State fans to witness Texas perform, um, you know, in person for the very first time in their lives. So uh, that's why they're creating this model right here. Um you have this uh, 366 model, and what it does is it makes you face three opponent, three annual opponents every single year, and then you face six other um, SEC opponents, and then you'll face the remaining six that in the following year that you didn't face in your current year. So if, if Alabama were to play Arkansas, Auburn, and Florida, for an example, I'm just going in alphabetical order here for this hypothetical, then they would face... LSU, Oklahoma, Georgia, Texas, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, and then the very next year, they would still face those uh, same three teams, Auburn, Arkansas, Florida, and Auburn, and then they would face Kentucky, Texas A&M, Missouri, Mississippi State, uh, Tennessee, and Ole Miss, so that's just an example of what this um, model is supposed to present forward. Now, the SEC has two new teams this year, Oklahoma and Texas, both of whom have history within the SEC in competition before. Te uh, Oklahoma played Texas in that famous uh, 2017 Rose Bowl. Georgia would win that game in double overtime, which was a phenomenal game before going uh, before going to lose to Alabama in the national title game. They played LSU when LSU had their great uh, 2019 season and that great, great offense led by Joe Burrow. And they would get blown out in the peach bowl, which was in the college football playoff. And they also, um, have also played Alabama in the national title game in between Georgia and LSU. I just realized that it was Georgia in 2017 and then Alabama in 2018 and then LSU in 2019 in the college football playoffs. And, uh, each team, uh, LSU, Alabama and Georgia would beat Oklahoma to go play in the national title game, only that um, LSU was able to win off of that, while Alabama, on the other hand, won their title in 2017 by beating Georgia rather than Oklahoma. So a little bit of it, though, so there's some history. Oh, and they also played uh, Florida in the 2008 national championship game. Let me make sure I include that part. And in the 2020 Cotton Bowl, in which Oklahoma infamously blew Florida out. Texas played uh, Alabama in the 2009 national title game, and they also played Alabama the last two seasons in 2023 and 2022. One on the road last year, lost at home to Alabama the year prior, which was a very close game that uh, some key mistakes uh, it, uh, for Texas would cost them uh, the sweep in that two-year uh, series. But they're going to have more opportunities to beat Alabama and play against Alabama now that they're in the conference. And also... Being that, uh, and they have rivalries back during the Southwest slash Big 8 slash Big 12 rivalries. Southwest rivalry with um, the Arkansas, Texas does with the Arkansas Razorbacks. And they obviously played in the Big 8, which would later become the Big 12 against te their hated uh, in-state rivals, Texas A&M. And they all, of course, have their Red River uh, history as well, which would be a great feature in the history of the SEC. It's one of the best route. Now the SEC, in my opinion, has two of the top three rivalries in college football, Red River and the Iron Bowl. Uh, of course, uh, the only other uh, rivalry that's not in the top three that isn't in the SEC is in the Big Ten with o Ohio State and Michigan. So there's your uh, little background into this video. And now we're going to talk about team, uh, which three teams that I have every SEC uh, conference program uh, slated against. 
So we're going to start off right here with Alabama. We're going to go in alphabetical order here uh, all the way through all of the teams in the um, in the conference, starting with Alabama, ending, in, ending with Vanderbilt. I have them against Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU. Now, it's not really a surprise that I think that the SEC is going to keep Auburn and Tennessee. Like I said, Auburn is the biggest rivalry in the conference. It's one of the greatest. It's arguably one of the top three greatest rivalries in college football in general. Alabama and Auburn in the Iron Bowl. They they all uh, in the in the state of Alabama. If you root for a college football team, is is they're asked, okay, you are an Alabama person. Is it Roll Tide or War Eagle? That's basically how it is. When a new coach is hired by one of these programs, the first question is, what is your plans to beat Auburn or what is your plans to beat Alabama? Uh, Tennessee, third Saturday in October, another great rivalry that Alabama has. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of been dominated by Alabama the last several years. I mean, they've won 16 of the last 17 matchups. Tennessee did beat Alabama in 2022. But, you know, it's just a great rivalry that you, the SEC wants to keep. And I think they're going to go with LSU as that third option because the rivalry between them has gone to new heights over the last two decades. So I think for ratings purposes and for the satisfaction of the of the SEC fans, I think it's best to keep that rivalry going between um, the Crimson Tide and the Bayou Bengals, as they're famously known, as they're affectionately known as. Next team, remember alphabetical order here, Arkansas. Now, Arkansas was tough because they have a lot of rivalries that this 3-6 matchup, 3-6-6 model, wouldn't be able to satisfy in terms of having them face every single year. So, um... Uh, I have them pitted against Ole Miss because that's I could have went without could have went with LSU, but I had um, but I think LSU kind of is like in the same position with Arkansas where they have so many rivals it's hard to create the right matchup. But I have Arkansas and Ole Miss going at it. They had a great game back in 2021 where they um, where it was a it was a very high octane scoring game and it took a failed two pointer by Arkansas to secure a victory for the Ole Miss Rebels, or Mississippi, as you may may call them. Then I also have them continuing their uh, annual Southwest Classic rivalry with Texas A&M. I think that's going to be protected, uh, and I think they're going to go... I think if the SEC wants to uh, make sure fans are invested in watching Texas play, having Texas play Arkansas would be great, bringing back the Southwest rivalry. Texas and Arkansas, despite their, uh, they rarely play each other now, still despise each other. And uh, if you don't believe me, go back to 2021 when Arkansas beat Texas, the jubilation that was on those fans' faces. So that's why I have uh, Texas as an opponent for the Razorbacks. We have Auburn here. I talked about their rivalry with uh, Alabama and the Iron Bowl. I don't think that's going away anytime soon, nor should it. I have them going. I obviously have them pitted against Georgia, the Deep South's over the oldest rivalry. Uh, I don't think the SEC is going to allow that to get to be getting rid of because I think the SEC is really going to want to keep uh, their rivalries together. And it would be a shame if Auburn and Georgia didn't play each other on a year in a year out basis. And I went with Mississippi State because there is some history between Auburn and Mississippi State. I looked up on Winsipedia.com, which if you don't know what that is, that's basically a college football database. Auburn and Mississippi State have actually played each other. I'm pulling it up right now on my computer as I'm talking to you guys on the phone. They have played each other over they play each other 97 times, which I didn't even know. So for and, and it's not just the fact that they play each other seven times, it's that you don't want this 366 model to be just about elevating the big name programs, your Alabamas and Auburns and LSUs and just, you know, having uh, the big rivalries play each other. You also want to make sure that your that the programs in your conference that may not necessarily be the most famous, like a Mississippi State Vanderbilt or whoever you or who have you is also represented well and also you know uh uh brought up at, uh brought up into the uh while you're having them play their three rivals on a year in a year out basis because outside of Ole Miss the only other uh Mississippi State doesn't really have a big uh second big rival in the SEC so I think that would be pretty good for them to have Auburn <clears throat> as part of Auburn's uh three uh three team cycle uh for Florida I'm a Gators fan 
Uh, I was kind of stuck on this one. I would love to have Florida face Tennessee every single year. But uh, considering the fact that the Tennessee and Florida rivalry has died down in terms of importance and in terms of competitiveness, because Florida, even when they're having bad seasons, just continues to beat Tennessee. I think that's probably the reason why the SEC is going to move away from that. So I have them facing Georgia. It's the world's largest after cocktail party. Uh, PC, uh, I don't care about political correctness. That's what I grew up on. That's a rivalry that's going to stay. Uh, I have them with LSU because... It has been a fantastic rivalry with there is an interesting storyline for the last two decades, whether it's a shoot throw by Marco Wilson, the hurricane on uh, getting Florida to f- make the Florida and LSU face each other in Gainesville two back to back years. You had the goal line stand in 2016, uh, the trick plays that LS the all special teams that LSU would have saved up for Florida. It's just a very fun rivalry and both fan bases are really into it. And surprisingly, I went with Kentucky because Kentucky went from being the Florida Gators doormat to now being the team that uses Florida as their doormat. And they've beaten um, Florida three years in a row. And after Florida had uh, Florida had uh, a very dominant hold on this matchup, and now Kentucky has won four of the last six. And if it wasn't for Kyle, uh, Felipe Franks' injury in 2019, excuse me, Kentucky would have won five out of six. So that's the reason why I'm going to have uh, Florida face Kentucky. So my three matchups for uh, Florida is Georgia, Kentucky, and LSU. Georgia already talked about the rivalries with Auburn and Florida. Uh, the third team that I have them facing is South Carolina because they're bordering states. And Georgia um, has a lot of rivals as well. Georgia, Auburn, and Florida, of course. But they also have Georgia Tech, South Carolina, and Clemson. And they obviously have a deep-seated hatred for uh, Alabama as well. So it was kind of – there was a – there's a lot of ways I could have went with that third matchup for Georgia. I could have went with Tennessee. I could have went with um, I could have went with Alabama. But I thought South Carolina would be a nice, you know, based on geographics, would be nice to have uh, Georgia play those three teams every single year. Kentucky I already talked about their matchups with their matchup with uh, Florida in this game, but I also had them going up against Tennessee because if you because as um, Kentucky. I'm pulling this up on my computer right now. Tennessee and Kentucky have played each other. They have played each other over 120 times. Over 120 times. Let's see. No, excuse me. 119 times with Tennessee having a big uh, uh, playing Kentucky. I believe every single year since 1919. Which, oh, excuse me. No, not 1919. 1933 they have played against each other a bunch excuse me from 1944 all the way through present day so it's a great rivalry that both fan bases are into i think the like i said before you want to make sure your uh your mid-level brands in in the sec football also get elevated uh, as well as the big programs as uh, big programs facing each other. I think it's important to make sure every single program in the SEC can be elevated with advertisement and viewership and fan engagement in this current model. So that's why I had Tennessee face Kentucky. Had to have Kentucky have their uh, battle against a big name program. I think would do good for their um, for their uh, uh, brand. And I have them against Vanderbilt because quite frankly, somebody has to play Vanderbilt. And I and Vanderbilt outside of Tennessee doesn't really have another big rival. The closest they have to that, uh, the closest they have to that is either Ole Miss or uh, Kentucky. Now, I don't have Vanderbilt and Ole Miss playing against each other. So that's a little bit of a spoiler there. But Kentucky and Vanderbilt have played each other about 96 times. So it's pretty good to... Um, it's good to have the have Vanderbilt in a annual matchup because somebody that they have history with. So Kentucky, Florida, I have them with Florida, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. LSU, uh, I as you see here on the screen, I have LSU going up against Alabama and Florida and Ole Miss. I talked about LSU's rivalries with um, Florida and Alabama, so I'm not going to really get into it that much. Uh, the reason why I picked uh, Ole Miss for LSU is because it's the Magnolia Bowl. They have, they've played each other over 112 times. Uh, the Magnolia Bowl is a very heated rivalry between these two teams. They met in 1894, and they have played each other every year since 1945. 
Uh, both programs uh, put a lot into this game. They invest heavily into this game. They compete for the Magnolia Bowl trophy. And I think Alabama, Ole Miss, and Florida is a great three-way matchup for LSU. They have a lot of rivals just like uh just like Georgia and Alabama and Arkansas. So it was kind of hard to leave one out. I mean, by having this matchup, you would leave out um, Arkansas, who LSU plays for the Golden Boot. But it was you're not going to be able to please everyone in this model. So those are the three I have for LSU, Alabama, Florida, and Ole Miss. Ole Miss, I have them. Obviously, you have the Egg Bowl right there, which is not going to be really talked about too much because you know that's going to be a protective rivalry. I just talked about their rivalry with LSU, and I talked about um, Arkansas's um, rivalry with Ole Miss. So uh, Ole Miss and Arkansas, That's uh, Ole Miss has Arkansas, LSU, and Mississippi State. I think those are going to be three really good rivalries for Ole Miss to keep on a year-in and year-out basis. Mississippi State talked about the Egg Bowl, talked about their matchup with up with uh, Auburn, and I talked about with Missouri because, well, like I said, you want to make sure you elevate all the programs in your conference by having by giving them a big uh, by giving them a a nice rival, an, another big name rival, uh, competitor to face on an annual basis. And I think Missouri and Mississippi State may be kind of odd. I kind of felt that way too, but I think that would be uh, a nice matchup that you rarely get to see that you've rarely gotten to see over the last several years. So it would create a new memory for uh, Mississippi State fans and Missouri fans. Missouri, just talking about them facing um, Mississippi State. I have them against South Carolina because I think it would be Battle of the Columbias, and it's a nice storyline between these two teams, one in Columbia, South Carolina, another one in Columbia, Missouri. And, you know, it's uh, in, uh, I think that's a good storyline for them to face each other. Oklahoma, because of their ties, other Big 12 ties, and Oklahoma doesn't really have any SEC rivals. I mean, yes, I talked about who they've played in the past, but uh, I think uh, this is probably the best you could do for um, Missouri to play uh, as a third opponent to have them play um, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, obviously, they're going to face Texas in the Red River rivalry. In my opinion, it's the second best rivalry in college football behind only Ohio State and Michigan. Uh, the SEC would be foolish not to have these teams face each other, and I have them facing against Missouri and Texas A&M because it would be nice to have a Big 12 blend in this SEC uh, matchups. South Carolina, I talked about them facing Georgia and Missouri. Uh, South uh, Carolina, I had them facing Vanderbilt because, well, somebody has to face Vanderbilt, so we're not going to get too deep into that. Tennessee talked about their rivalries with Alabama and Kentucky. Uh, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt is Tennessee is by far Vanderbilt's biggest rival. They have faced each other. I'm a pull, I'm looking this up here on my computer. They have faced each other precisely 118 times. 80 wins for Tennessee, 33 wins for Vanderbilt to get you 113 and five draws. So uh, Tennessee had, currently has a five game win streak, and a lot of people don't think about Tennessee and Vanderbilt when you talk about in-state rivalries, but it means a lot to both of these programs and their fan bases. So those are the three for Tennessee right here, Alabama, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky. Texas, I talked about the rivalries with uh, with Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas A&M. So I think that makes the most sense for Texas fans to get, uh, for SEC fans to really uh, be involved and want to uh, watch Texas play. Having them against Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas A&M, I think it would be three great rivalries to have to welcome um, Texas into the SEC. Texas A&M, I've talked about their uh, matchup with Arkansas and Texas. I said... I also said that they were going to face Oklahoma just to have that Big 12 blend. Uh, blend. So Texas A&M will face their heated rivals in the Longhorns and Razorbacks, and they'll face their former Big 12 opponents in Oklahoma Sooners. And Vanderbilt talked about the rivalries with uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, and they're also going to face South, uh, South Carolina. So that's who I have right now for the... Um, for the 366 model, I might change my mind again and may decide to revisit this topic later on, but that's uh that's how I have the model playing out. So, thank you for watching.